Hello, welcome back boys and girls. Today's story is called The Tales of Meadowbrook Hollow, Grandfather Rabbit's Game, written by E.W. Rhodes. Now this is a remarkable classic story of a young bunny and his journey to save a dear friend. Now let's see what happens. Let's get started. Who wants to get some carrots? Alex hollered, twitching his nose and climbing to the top of the rabbit hole so that he could peek into the garden. Not me, replied Steffi, his little sister. I've already eaten the better part of a cantaloupe. Fine, I'll find someone else who wants to have some fun. The older rabbit said, leaping into the garden. And Alex broke into a run, hopping over two cabbages and a tomato bush before tripping over a sweet potato vine that sent him tumbling. He then rolled over a patch of green beans and he passed three rows of sweet corn out of the garden and into a neighboring rabbit hole. And he spiraled downwards and came to an abrupt stop when he landed head first on his neighbor's living room floor. Alex, mind your manners. Mrs. Brussels called it. You know better than to come in before being invited. And Alex sheepishly rubbed his eye and said, I'm sorry. It is right home. And before Mrs. Brussel could answer, Raya poked her head around her bedroom door and she escaped into the living room. She grabbed Alex's paws and pulled him out of the rabbit hole at garden's edge. Now the sunlight bounced off the vegetable leaves and into the two bunnies eyes. Now Raya squinted and then she looked at Alex and said, I'm hungry. And then she darted across the garden, hopping over the sweet potatoes, past the tomato bush and over the cabbage patch before disappearing. Not again, Alex yelled. Where are you? Don't hide from me. You know that we need to be careful because the farmer and his dog are always trying to catch us. So Alex searched the garden for his friend and eventually he saw Raya's cotton tail poking out from inside a large watermelon. Oh, there you are, said Alex, relieved. Raya, we need to be more careful. Well, Raya didn't answer. Alex could hear munching sound. So he grabbed her back legs and pulled his friend from the massive fruits. But Alex, the melon tastes so good. Raya yelled, diving headfirst back into the melon. Alex again reached for his friend, but before he could grab her, he heard a loud growl from behind him. And then his heart started beating fast. And before he could move, he felt something grip his rear right leg. Ouch! It was Sam, the farmyard, coming. 
Ron, Raya, Ron, Alex screamed. And Raya pulled herself from the melon. She grabbed one last ball full of fruit. And then she scampered across the garden. Sam dropped Alex and dashed after Raya. Just as Sam reached for the bunny, Raya dove into a tunnel that led to her home. And then, immediately, the collie spun around and charged across the garden towards Alex. Now, Alex raced through acres of soybeans, an enormous field of rain, and across a small pond. Now, he was so scared that tears sprang from his eyes as he darted between the cows and sheep grazing in the pasture. And finally, the chase was over. And the colleague had trapped the small bunny against the back of a big red barn. And Sam slowly stepped towards Alex, stretched his mouth wide open, and just before Sam's sharp teeth clamped closed, Alex was pulled by the ear between two loose boards and into the barn. And the collie lunged forward and poked his nose inside the barn and then snapped his teeth. Now, Alex was far from the dog's reach. However, and Sam was too big to slip between the boards. Ah, thank you very much, said Alex, turning around and smiling at the large end who had saved him. It's not over yet, the end squawked. And Alex turned and saw Sam charge through the sliding door at the front of the barn. And with a swoop of a beak, the end snatched off the small bunny and tossed him into a nest. And then she hopped onto the nest and clucked loudly at the collie. Sam circled the fat end, bearing his teeth and growling. And then Farmer Groucher heard the rockers, and he scurried into the barn and yelled, Sam, get out of there. Leave them birds alone. And Sam whimpered and scrambled out of the barn. The farmer chased after the dog, swinging his pitchfork. Now, after a few moments, the hen sprang from a nest. Ah, are they gone? Asked Alex. Sam won't be back for ages, the hen replied. But Groucho will be back this evening to feed us. To feed you? The little rabbit asked. You ask a lot of questions. The end clucked. I'm sorry. Alex apologized. This all seems strange. A farmer feeding animals? Why wouldn't a farmer feed animals? The end asked. Well, Farmer Groucher had never fed me, the bunny said. In fact, whenever he sees me eating his fruits and vegetable, he tries to shoot me. You an odd little fellow, the ant said. Who are you anyway? I'm Alex, the bunny replied. I live on the far side of Meadowbrook Hollow at Garden's Edge, next to Farmer Groucher's garden. And who are you? I'm Myra, the wisest of all the ants, the large bird boasted. You won't be for long, a younger hen squawked. Groucher says 
He's fixing to have you for dinner. <laughs> Admira turned to the smaller bird and she pecked her sharply on the head and warned. Get back to your nest, Kayla. What does that mean? Alex asked. Well, farmers raise hens either for eggs or for meat, Myra explained. And when a hen gets older and isn't able to lay many eggs, farmers think they aren't worth their cake. Huh. How many eggs do you lay? Alex asked. Well, usually two a week, the hen replied. But I'm good at pulling groucher. I open a younger hen's nest when no one is looking. So that groucher thinks I laid someone else's egg. You get caught. You get caught. <laughs> Kayla squawked from a nest. You better watch out. Watch yourself, Kayla. Myra warned. I heard Groucher complaining that there's no money in eggs anymore. He says that if things don't change, he's getting rid of all of us. And there won't be an end left in Meadowbrook Hollow. Now Kayla shivered and buried her head in her wing. Well, you can come live with me, Alex told his new friend. Thank you very much, Myra responded. But an ant can't sleep on the ground. Huh, there must be something we can do, Alex said. Don't worry about me, little fella, Myra answered. You've got enough problems with Groucher and Sam. But you saved my life, and I want to do something for you, the bunny replied. Nothing would please me more than knowing you got home safely, the end said. I can hear the truck leaving. Grouch and Sam will be heading for town. There won't be a safer time. You better be off. And Alex hopped to the back of the barn and notched at the boards with his nose until he found the loose ones. Now before pushing his way outside, he turned back to Myra and he twitched his whiskers and then he said, Thanks again. I'm gonna miss you. Be off, my friend. Be off with you. The end clocked. Your family must be worried about you. Can I visit you? Alex said. Only if you are careful. Myra squawked. Now run along. And then Alex darted across the pasture, around the pond, through the field of A, over acres of soybeans, and back to Garden's Edge. Never once did he look back. Now in the garden, the grand site for Alex was already on the way. And Alex's mother, grandfather, and sister, as well as Mrs. Brussels and Raya, had begun scoring the garden for him. Here he comes! Here's Alex! Stevie yelled when she saw him. Oh, are you okay? Alex's mother cried, hugging him. It's good to be home, Alex replied. I am okay. Did Sam catch you? Raya asked her friend when she nibbled the large red tomato. Almost, 
but Myra saved me. Alex explained. Myra? Who's that? Mrs. Brunson asked. Oh, she's a big hen, answered Alex. She lives in Groucher's barn. The barn? Grandfather Rabbit asked. I haven't been there since I was a boy. And Alex's mother looked at her son and said, He looks hungry and tired. I think we have asked him enough questions. Now Alex ate three carrots, a turnip, and four radishes before he snuggled into his bed. And before long, he had drifted to sleep and was dreaming about Myra. However, the dreams melted into nightmares filled with terrible outcomes for the end. And at about midnight, Grandfather Rabbit awoke to the sound of whimpering coming from Alex's bed. <laughs> What's wrong, little fella? The old rabbit asked. And Alex sat up, hugged his grandfather and asked. Why a farmer so mean? What do you mean? Asked Grandfather Rabbit. Well, Groucho is always trying to shoot us, Alex said. Well, he's just protecting what he is, explained Grandfather Rabbit. You do the same. Remember when you pulled Raya's tail because she took your carrot? But why would Groucho want to get rid of the hands? Alex asked. Oh, they might be getting too expensive to feed, Grandfather Rabbit suggested. I feel really bad. I think he's going to kill Myra, said Alex. She saved my life. And I must try and save hers. Hmm. Well, maybe I can figure something out. Grandfather Rabbit whispered. Now, go back to sleep. Have you come up with a plan yet? Alex asked his grandfather. It was the next morning. And his grandfather was pacing around the garden. I've got no idea, his grandfather replied. But we're gonna need help. Now Stephen and Raya will help, Alex responded. Go fetch them, grandfather rabbit replied taking a bite of melon. Now the old rabbit was settled on the head of cabbage when Alex, Stevie and Raya climbed out of the tunnel and led from the Brussels home and into the garden. We're ready, Stevie shouted to her grandfather. Now get me two big watermelons, four honeydews, eight cornstalks, 20 feet of grapevines, and a pointed carrots. Grandfather Rabbit said to the bunnies, Yippee! We're gonna have a party! Raya exclaimed. Mm, they're not to eat, the old rabbit scolded. Now hurry along! And then the bunnies bustled about, gathering the supplies before returning to Grandfather Rat. I'm hungry, Raya whined as she dragged the cornstalk across the garden. Wonderful! Now I've got the perfect job for a hungry bunny, said Grandfather Rabbit. Now you can split the watermelons in half and hollow out their inside. That should fill you up. 
Soraya dove on the larger of the two watermelons and began feasting on it. Now Stephanie and Alex dragged 20 foot long pieces of grapevine over to Grandfather Rabbit who was sitting by a pile of cornstalks, honeydew melons and watermelons. Yes, just what I need, the older rabbit said, taking one of the pieces of vine. He then connected the honeydew to a cornstalk. Is that a melon sickle? Raya asked. No time for foolish questions, the old rabbit said, as he wrestled a watermelon half between the two cornstalks. Now, come on, give me a hand. And Grandfather Rabbit then secured the two cornstalk, a honeydew, and watermelon half together, and then raised the free ends of the two cornstalks. It's a wheelbarrow, Alex Wooden. Oh no, the old rabbit replied. It's a melon barrow. Now there's enough supplies for three more, Grandfather Rabbit said. What are you waiting for? And the three bunnies eagerly assembled their cars. Now what do we do now? Stevie asked when they were all completed. Everyone, pick up a melon barrel, Grandfather Rabbit instructed. And Alex will lead the way. Alex rolled his melon barrel to the edge of the garden, made sure that Father, Groucher, and Sam were nowhere to be seen, and then looked at his grandfather and the two bunnies and commanded, Follow me! And he led Stevie, Raya, and Grandfather Rabbit in single file through the soybeans, the field of A across the pond and finally through the pasture. Now it was early evening when they reached the back of the big barn. How do we get in? Grandfather Rabbit asked. And Alex found the loose barn boards and pried his way into the barn. You two, wait here, the old rabbit told Stevie and Raya as he followed Alex. Now, Grandfather Rabbit and Alex tiptoed to Myra's nest. We came to save you, Alex whispered. You know I can't live on the ground, Myra reminded him. Now, who said anything about living on the ground? Grandfather Rabbit asked. Tell each of the ants to roll their eggs to the back of the barn. Why? Myra questioned. Just do as I say, Grandfather Rabbit demanded. We don't have much time. Now, after arguing with Kayla, Myra eventually convinced all the ants to give up their eggs. And one by one, they each rolled their eggs to the back of the barn. And one by one, Alex and Grandfather Rabbit passed each egg to Stevie and Raya, who carefully set them in the melon barrels. Now, when the last egg was passed and the melon barrels were full, Myra asked, What now? Trust me, said Grandfather Rabbit, and he raised the cornstalk handles of his melon barrel and then Follow the three bunnies on the long trek back to the garden. Now, Alex's mother and Miss Brussel were anxiously waiting in the garden when Grandfather Rabbit and the bunnies arrived with the melon barrels filled with eggs. Do you think we have enough time? Mrs. Brussel asked Grandfather Rabbit. It's almost midnight. Well, if everything is ready, 
we should have time. The old rabbit assured her. Oh, we're ready. Alex's mother smiled and she pointed to the six grass paint brushes that she had made. And next to them lay six honeydew melons, all hopped and filled with different vegetable and fruit juices that had been stored for the Easter punch. All right, we'd better hurry. Tomorrow is Easter. Now, Raya grabbed a honeydew melon and began to gulp down the juice. Stop! Mrs. Brussel yelled. That juice is for the eggs. And Raya apologized. Sorry! And then each of them picked up a grass brush and began painting the eggs with bright colored juices. I like the blueberry juice best, Alex said, holding up a delightful blue egg that he had just painted. They're all beautiful, Stevie said, dipping a grass brush into a melon filled with deep red tomato juice. Now, once all the eggs were painted, they were gently placed back into the melon barrels. Now the eggs glistened in the moonlight as the three bunnies and Grandfather Rabbit began their Easter Eve journey. And they visited neighboring towns, hiding eggs carefully as they went. And the following morning, children cheered as they found colored eggs eating on the bushes and trees. Easter eggs! One of the children shouted, Easter eggs, Easter eggs. Children everywhere began to chant, spreading news of an Easter miracle throughout the world. Now, later that day, word of the colored eggs spread to the Goucher farm. Why can't my eggs lay beautiful eggs? Farmer Groucher wondered as he opened his barn door. All of the ends, including Kayla, began to shudder as he approached Myra. However, as Myra was lifted from a nest, cheers filled the room. In our nest lay the most beautiful egg ever. Hmm. I guess eggs aren't such a bad business after all, Groucho said, admiring it. And Alex picked up from behind a bale of A and winked at Myra. Now the following Easter Eve and every Easter Eve since then, Grandfather Rabbit, Alex, Stevie and Ryan wheel their melon barrels to the big barn and after a long debate with Kayla Myra coaxes all the eggs into giving up their eggs and each Easter Eve Alex's mother and Mrs. Brussel help Grandfather Rabbit and the bunnies paint the eggs with wonderful colors now, Easter days are always magical as children awaken to the marvel that beautiful colored eggs bring to the world. <laughs> wow, what a wonderful, beautiful story. Thank you so much for joining us, boys and girls, for this story time. We thank you for being here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you soon.